grace, mercy, peace. They are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Late service, I'll have kids do this. I, I'm tempted to pick on a couple of our guys or ladies today, but I'm going to give you a break. Pam, you can take a breath. It's not choosing you. But you all know what this is. Play-Doh. And I'm going to have the children make something out of it. And we'll see what their creativity has. Just out of curiosity. I won't make you come up and do it. But Matt, out of this, what would you make? A dog. See, I thought it was going to be a computer. but No. <laughs> a dog, all right? Pam, what would you make? A what? A flower. Now, see, that's more like what I would have expected. Okay, Pam's got that. <laughs> or Deb, for that matter. Dave, what would you make? A horse. You heard somebody say it. Now, for Dave, I would have thought maybe it was a hammer or something like that. But in any case, whatever you made, I want you to pretend with me for a second that you made your object. Let's take Pam's beautiful flower. Not, not slighting you gentlemen, but let's take Pam's beautiful flower. And as that flower is sitting there and we're looking at it, Everybody's admiring it. <clears throat> Pam, can you imagine a little voice coming from that flower saying, Yes, I'm so pretty, I made myself. No. Because you know that while Plato speaks of the imagination of our minds, it doesn't really speak. This could be Plato, it could be wood could be silver or gold like other objects that are expressed in scripture. I seem to recall that when Moses went up to the mountain he heard a great commotion and went down to find that his brother Aaron had really messed up. You recall what had happened? The people grew impatient. We've been in this desert. We're thirsty. We don't like the food. It's taking too long. Are we there yet? And it was never true. So at least it's not what they wanted to hear. And so they took the gold that they had taken from the Egyptians on their way out from the Exodus. They threw it in and melted it. And Aaron says... And lo and behold, this calf jumped out. The golden calf, recall that? The calf just happened to appear. The, um, the implication is the calf made itself. Jesus addresses this many times. And he says, you are not the one who shapes yourself. I have made you. We go all the way back to the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. They're shaped not by man's knowledge and handiwork, but by God's. And that's what came across in this passage from Isaiah. God, in a slight paraphrase, said... Where do you get off thinking that you are the potter and I am the clay, someone that you can just twist and shape to your whim? There's going to be a day of reckoning, he said. A day of reckoning in which everything is turned upside down. Your pride becomes that real problem. 
Well, I tell you, with this reading from Isaiah 29, you look at the other two readings that Don had today, and seldom in the church here do we find three more disparate, unlike readings. Jim shaking his head to that one. You had this one about potters. God is the potter, not us. You have the reading about men and women, husbands and wives. And then in the gospel, you had this reading where, where Jesus again has something that has to be turned completely upside down. We're going to deal with that gospel reading in Bible class. So I invite you to that after this worship service. And we're going to talk about what it is. I call it wash day. Wash day. But for these two readings, let's stay with Isaiah and Ephesians. And let's see how the Holy Spirit ties those together. It's easy to see how God reminds you and me. I'm the clay, he's the potter, he makes of me what he wills. And believe me, there are days where I second guess what he has done. There are days where I say, Lord, why did you make me in such a way that I could still make these foolish comments or mistakes? How could you have made me in such a way that I don't see the needs of other people when they're right in front of my eyes? How could you have made me in such a way that at days my faith itself seems to wander as in a labyrinth, twisting and turning? I'm not really sure which end is up. And it's not just with the political scene or financial scene or the global scene. It's with my scene, Lord. It's with me right here. And Isaiah, speaking by God's Holy Spirit, says, You are who you are by God's design. Now that's easy enough when we sit here and together and we have a beautiful little... How old is your little one now? Wow. It's almost like brand new, right? Now we know that the old nature is always in us, even from conception on. So a sinful being born brand new has been washed in the waters of baptism. That's getting ahead to the Bible class and baptism and everything else. But it's, it's that shaping that takes place there and the pouring out of God's Holy Spirit. And I know we would love to go back and say, ah, if only I could tweak a few genes, remake a few things. We had Bible classes on that, didn't we, Matt? About genetics and other things and digging deeper. Why does God still allow me to stumble, trip, and at times even be a stumbling block to others? Unwittingly, no doubt. But it still happens. Trust me, in your baptism, he made no mistake. In your shaping, he made no mistake. He created you to be his tool, his instrument, his agent of change in a world that direly needs it. And that honestly leads us into that second reading for today with husbands and wives. The difficult passage that a lot of pastors go, I don't think I'll preach on that one today. Because in this modern world, any discussion of husbands and wives and submission and this and that, that goes over like a lead balloon, doesn't it? 
But this is part of God's pottery and his shaping. And the understanding, and although I know those of you who are here today as faithful members, faithful believers, I'm going to reiterate it. It begins, it begins with each of us knowing that phrase, for this reason a man shall leave his mother and father, cleave to his wife, they'll become one flesh. You thought I was going to submit right away, didn't you? But instead, let's start with the real meat of it. It's the idea that husband and wife together, cleaving as one flesh, and it's not simply sexual, it has to do with spiritual. It has to do with emotional. It has to do with every aspect of our lives. And in that framework, we now understand how the readings fit together. Because the picture is this. <clears throat> Any woman who has a husband who loves her and gives himself like Christ does. Any woman who has a husband who sees Christ and hears Christ in her husband day by day will have no problem whatsoever saying, well, we've talked about it. This is my opinion. What are we going to do? And she trusts her husband to say, I believe at this point through our prayers and our discussion that we need to go this direction. Eight years ago, my wife and I moved from her dream home in Wiley, east of us here. You remember, Hale had just devastated that house. She said, Jack, I can never live there again. I'd had surgery 10 days earlier. On a whim for recovery, we got in the car and we went for a drive. There were model homes up at the top of our hill in our community. And I said, you know, one of these days we're going to have to downsize, to which she went, now, now this is her dream home. We went for a drive and we ended up in North Fort Worth. Where the homes there of the same make and model <laughs> cost substantially less. We walked in, chatted with the lady, went to see one of the homes under construction. The whole time, Carolyn is relaxed. And we walk out to the car, and I said to her, Sweetheart, this is where we're supposed to be. And you could almost hear the head on the swivel say, what? <laughs> I said, babe, this is where we need to be. For her quality of life, as well as mine. For a new beginning, for her and for me. For a step away from the bad tapes Hail pounding on the roof and rolling through the house from the back door all the way to the front door. I'm talking to the sales agent. My wife steps out. She's on the phone calling our daughter, Karen, your father's buying a house. Karen says, say what? Stay right there. Chris and I will be there in five minutes. <laughs> They came, we all walked through the house. It was a little bit of a downsize, not much, but some. And they heard my reasoning and the fact that I said, I can't tell you a lot, but I can tell you this. This is where we need to be for that new beginning. This was the weekend before that storm. Many times Carolyn has said, Jack, I don't know if I would have made it through those nine months of rebuilding our house to prepare it for sale. 
Had I not known that we had a house to which we could go, a house that she now loves, and loved at the time, but not as much as the other one. You see, my wife, in spite of my failures, shortcomings, impatience, please don't make another list or raise your hand to add something else. There are plenty of cracks in this piece of pottery. Carolyn has always said, when we talk and we pray together and you feel that strongly about something, I'll support you. That's what this is dealing with, folks. This last week was our 54th anniversary. Four years of dating before that because they would not let us be married while in college. Okay? God is still shaping me. He's still shaping her through the teaching that she has. Which, by the way, how many husbands are in full support of their, uh, well, we've been married 54 years, so... So their wife, how many husbands would support their wife of a certain age still teaching? This is her 49th year. She wants to make it 50. I am absolutely convinced and became absolutely convinced during COVID. My ministry was primarily to take care of her. Please do not think I'm trying to put us or me on a pedestal. That will never work. Just like this microphone slipping down, you'll fall off the pedestal. <clears throat> but wives, if you have a husband who loves you, cares for you, loves the Lord, and respects your opinions, your thoughts, your judgment, your intuitiveness, please, I beg you, listen to him and trust that he is also trying to do his best for you and for your family. Husbands, the greater job in all this lies on you and me. Because when we go back to Isaiah 29 and we say, I'm the one who makes this marriage, things are going to crash. They will crater. We must humble ourselves. We must submit to the hand of the Lord. We must be the ones who lay down our lives, not just in defense of our wife if an attack were to occur, but in the everyday situations where we've messed up and the only thing that is proper and Jesus-like is for us to go back and to say, I was wrong. Please forgive me. And guys, I promise you, if you do that, with your wife. Wives, if you will work with your husband in those situations, you will find that you are being shaped into something unbelievably precious. Even yet, today, at this point of your life, single, married, divorced, widowed, it doesn't matter. Because you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you have been filled by God's Holy Spirit, and you are still being directed to each other, for each other, with each other, and with all of us here to be the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. Let's lay down our pride. 
Let's pick up humility. And let's let God shape us for his purpose in his ways. For our sins have been forgiven for one purpose, to touch the lives of others in his name. Pray with me, please. Lord God, I give you thanks and praise that you are not finished with us yet. I guess I really need to say, Lord, keep breaking me so that you can rebuild me. Keep breaking me until you are my heart's desire. And everything that we do, lead us, Lord. For this congregation in calling a pastor, for those who would fill in and follow in my steps again today or who have gone before me, that we continue to hear your word spoken simply and purely. Be with us in our worship, in our study, and throughout this week of our lives in you. Amen. And now, my friends in Christ, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.